Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode. Now we've had a little bit of a break in the rain and it's supposed to be really really hot this coming week so I thought I would come up the allotment and tick a few jobs off the list. So today I'm going to be planting out my dahlia cuttings. I'm also going to be planting out a few more dwarf French beans. I'll be sowing some bolotti beans and we're also going to get the net on the brassica cages as well. So it's time to plant out my dahlia cuttings and I'm so excited about growing these. Um, over on my old plot I had two dahlias um, and I managed to move them over so they are here now. One is Fairway Spur and the other one is Caf Olay. Um, and I actually thought that I'd lost them over there. I thought that the tubers had just rotted in the ground um, but when I went over there the other day to bring a few things over here I noticed them so I dug them up and I brought them over here they seem to be doing okay, which is great. So that's two extra dahlias for my rose. And for the first time ever, I'm able to grow a lot more flowers. So I'm having two rows of dahlias here, all the way up to the herb patch. And these will be here, hopefully forever. What I'm planning on doing is not digging them up. I've never had much luck when I've had to dig up dahlia tubers, when I've stored them in my shed they've always just rotted and I don't know what I was doing wrong they were you know they were dry and everything so um, I've just I've never had much luck with storing them anyway so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave them in the ground and if we are going to have a very very cold winter what I might do is maybe buy some of those glass cloches those little bell cloches um, and put them over each tuber or probably just mulch them um, to to help keep them um, yeah, in the ground because <laughs> I, I don't want to dig them up and lose them and be at square one again. Um, but anyway, I ordered my dahlia cuttings from a local nursery which specialises in dahlias. Um, and I think I ordered them back in February or it might have been last year late last year i can't remember um but anyway i got a, a telephone call the other day to say that they were ready to pick up so i went to pick them up and i potted them on into these little pots they've been in them for about two weeks now i think it's about time to plant them out into their forever homes so i have got how many have i got here seven i've got seven here and when I ordered them, I, I thought I'd ticked a box to say that I didn't want any replacements, um, but I've got two replacements. So they obviously didn't have two of the ones which I wanted, which I was a little bit upset about because it took me quite a while to choose the varieties um, which I wanted on my allotment. And yeah, it took me a long time to go through all the colors and all the varieties and decide on them. <laughs> so to have two sort of like mystery ones yeah was I was a little bit gutted about um I think I went through the varieties um in a previous video with you but I will go through them again uh, just in case so the varieties which I ordered from the Gilbert Dahlia Nursery was a Cafe Lay again a Totally Tangerine Cornell Bronze, Croydon Superior, Holland's Festival, Little Snowdrop, and Myrtle's Folly. Is that seven? One, two, three. Yeah, that was seven. <laughs> and I thought I had room for 10 here. I think I might have room for a little bit more because I was giving them a little bit more spacing than they needed to. So I think if I squeeze them up a little bit more which will be perfectly fine I'll be able to fit a couple more in which is great um, and there are a couple more which I want to buy I want to buy a labyrinth and Polverton Christabel but I was a bit late to the party and obviously they were all sold out so I'll have to 
maybe try and buy them for next year. But anyway, the two that had replacements were Little Snowdrop and Myrtle's Folly. And they were replaced by Foxy Lady and Nina Kazi, um, which I did look up and they do look okay, but yeah, they're no Little Snowdrop or Myrtle's Folly. Um, so what I might do is plant them out. If I don't like them, then maybe they can go um, into my parents' front garden or I'll give them to someone else because um, I really had my heart set on those two other varieties. It sounds really silly, but yeah, I chose them because of their colours. <laughs> um, so yeah, I ordered the Dahlia cottons mainly because they were a lot cheaper than buying um, the Dahlia plants. And like I said, I haven't had much luck with tubers before. I didn't want to buy loads of tubers um, for them to not grow. <laughs> So I got the cuttings. Obviously they would take a little while to establish, but um, I'm so, so excited about growing more dahlias. So like I said, I'm gonna have two rows here all the way along. I'm gonna place them about two feet apart. And then what I will do is try and create a sort of frame for them um, because they will need supporting. It's quite windy on this site. Um, and yeah, they will need supporting. So what I might do is maybe try and make like a frame and then have sort of like a cross mesh on the top for them to grow through and just to be supported. Um, I'll try and get my dad on the case to make something. Um, but yeah, really, really excited. Last thing I'm gonna do also, because I'm not gonna individually label my dahlias, what I'm gonna do, and it's quite good if you want to keep an eye on which varieties are where, I'm gonna draw out my little dahlia bed here and then I'm gonna put the little dots of each plant and then put the name by each one. And I did exactly the same when I planted my tulips out in the trough, just so I knew which tulips were where. Um, Cause yeah, I'd quite like to know which ones are which without having to look at pictures of them to, um, to see which flower has which name. So I'm gonna just get these in two feet apart See how far we get but obviously like i said next year i can hopefully add some more dahlias to my collection Loads of room. Thank you for weeding that for me. <laughs> go on then. Walk over my I, need to, I need to go there to do the draw. Nice the... <laughs> I like this. Like done <laughs> you, prefer, you prepare it ready for sewing. Oh, look, footprints. <laughs> ready? Go the other way. <laughs> All done? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All ready to sew the bolotti beans. Perfect. 
So as you can see, this wigwam is looking a little bit bare. Um, there were two pumpkins planted here and they were the baby boo variety, which were the little white pumpkins. Um, and they were meant to climb up here, but they just disappeared completely. So they obviously weren't happy there. I've got two munchkin pumpkins on the wigwam over there. They seem to be okay. Um, but what I might do is I might also sow some bolotti beans up that wigwam as well, just to fill it up a little bit. And I'll also sow some bolotti beans by the sweet corn as well to do a sort of two sisters, not three sisters, two sisters. Um, I did it over on my old plot and it seemed to work really well. And one of the best things about bolotti beans if you don't eat them fresh, obviously, you can just leave them. So you can sow them, leave them to grow, and then in the autumn, when they start to dry out, you can pick them and just allow them to dry out further in the shed, put them, put them in some jars, and you've got some nice little beans to add to your stews and casseroles. They are honestly one of my favorite things to grow just because they're so easy, um, but they're just so delicious as well. And the variety that I grow, are Bellotti lingua di fuoca. I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> um, yeah, I always grow this variety. And you can actually sow them quite late in the season, which is really good as well. I think um, a couple of years ago, I think I sowed them like July um, and I was picking them in September. There wasn't a massive harvest, but if you haven't got much space um, and you want to use a sort of second growing season, then, then they are a really, really good crop to grow. I'm going to pop some around this wigwam, around that wigwam, and up the sweet corn as well. So I'm going to put um, two seeds per leg, and then I'm going to put some seeds in the middle of each leg as well. But they want to be about two inches deep and about eight inches apart. So I'm just going to use my dibber to make the holes. And I'm going to sow two seeds per hole just in case. And just cover them back up. So hopefully this wigwam won't look bare for very long. I don't know if you remember me sowing some giant poppies in this row here. I think it was well over a month ago now. I think it was the end of April actually. As you can see, nothing appeared. Only weeds came through here um, and I was absolutely gutted. I really, really wanted some poppies on the allotment this year. Um, but yeah, nothing came up. So this is just empty bare soil. I had some spare dwarf French beans, so I thought I'm just going to put them in instead um, and try and grow poppies maybe in the autumn. So um, I might try and sow some seeds in the autumn when things are dying back. Uh, but yeah, I had some spare dwarf French beans and there's actually a row of the beans here as well. So I thought if I just pop in another row next door, because I don't want to see any bare soil on the allotment. It's a little bit of a waste, especially now it's middle of June. Um, yeah, it just seemed a bit of a waste. These really needed planting out a few weeks ago now. And in fact, I sowed these as replacements because I didn't think I was going to have enough for this row. I did, and then these were spare. So it all sort of... Um, it all sort of turned out well in the end, you could say. Now this variety is a dwarf French bean. I didn't want anything tall here because the sun goes across this way and I didn't want it to overshadow any of the other crops. So I went for dwarf French beans and the variety is amethyst, which are 
purple um, and I've grown them before over on the old plot. I think I grew them as like a second crop um, later on in the year and they were really really lovely. They're purple but when you cook them they turn green so they're like magic beans which I love. So yeah I'm just going to put in another row here and um, I think there's about 14 in the row. I spaced them about a foot apart but yeah very very sad not to have poppies this year but um I'll have more beans so it's not entirely a loss. Right, it's time to get the netting on the brassicas because what we have been doing is putting these little netted tunnels over them but because they've grown so big now with all this sunshine and rain we've been having they've started to touch the top of the netting and the netting pushes them down and it sort of it delays their growth in a way um, and anyway we wanted to put these netted cages on top of the brassicas we were just waiting for the netting to arrive. Um, I had some of the netting over on my old plot. I thought for some reason it was gonna be enough to bring over here to cover the brassicas here, but we only managed to cover one cage with the cauliflower and the broccoli in. And we needed a cage for the purple sprouting, cage for the Brussels sprouts, and then a cage for the red cabbage, winter cabbage, and kale. So we needed three more lots of butterfly netting. And I ordered it from Harrod Horticultural. It's the soft mesh butterfly netting, which is seven millimeter um, netting. It's really, really good stuff, but they actually emailed and delayed the order. And then that date came around and then they delayed it again until like middle of July. And I was panicking a little bit, but then all of a sudden they said it was dispatched and it arrived uh, the day before yesterday. So we cut it up in the back garden into the length that we wanted because we ordered six meter wide by 13 meter in length. So we've cut them into the three sizes that we want and we've labeled which brassica they'll be going over. And then what we're gonna do is, obviously the netting won't stay on, on the allotment for the whole of winter. And to be all organized, when we take the netting off, we're gonna bundle it up, tie it in a bundle, pop a label on it so we know which cage it covers so we are all prepared for next year but you definitely need butterfly netting to protect your brassicas um, we've always used it we've never really had any problems with caterpillars or butterflies attacking our brassicas um, and obviously you need to protect them from birds as well so it sort of doubles up as bird protection and butterfly protection as well so we're going to get these on now i'm really excited to see how they look um, yeah just to give our brassicas a little bit more room to breathe and hopefully grow. Snippy. Snippy things. Snippy. 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 Snippy
cut it quite easy. Oh look, it's stuck out there. Right, yeah, yeah. Well that's a few jobs ticked off the list anyway, there's still quite a few things I want to do but I don't think there's too much of a rush to do them, like I want to make the pond um, but I think that's going to wait now until the autumn when I can really head out and get some proper supplies. Also need to move the rhubarb so we need to wait until that's dormant as well um, but I'm really excited to get cracking on that area. And then there's just a few little DIY jobs, like I want to make a pallet picket fence again. I want to move the gates over and obviously put the fence posts in for that. And make a ramp for my water tank. Um, yeah, just little jobs really. And we need to tidy up the compost area. Um, but yeah, apart from that, things are coming on really, really well. And we're managing to keep on top of the weeds. My dad likes to do the hoeing, so I tend to let him do the hoeing and um, while well, I get on with the other jobs like planting things out and things like that so we've got quite a good little bit of teamwork going on at the moment and it's working really really well which is great because this is how I envisioned it to be when I decided to move over here and join my dad on his allotment plot um, it's worked out amazingly so I'm really really happy with that and yeah, things are just growing really, really well. We've been having a few days of rain and then there's been sunshine. So it's been perfect, really perfect weather for growing um, and perfect weather for us as well. Because it also means we don't need to come up and water the allotment so often, <laughs> which is really, really good. Um, but yeah, I think the only thing we're going to do this evening is film a tour for you. So I don't know which order these videos are going to come out in. There might already be a tour on there, but... Um, I'm going to make us a cup of tea and then we're going to have a wander around the allotment and film the tour. But I really, really hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time.